Could it be possible to see a paddle sweet spot? And if so, what would that look like? If you've spent any time around the sport of pickleball, you're no doubt familiar with the concept of the sweet spot. It's that magical space on the paddle face where hits are powerful, and predictable, consistent, and just oh so satisfying. Hits away from the sweet spot lack that certain something. They're just, they fall a little flat, they don't go where you expect them to, they don't sound right, they just don't feel right because they're not in the sweet spot. It's no surprise then that paddle manufacturers spend a lot of time and energy and ultimately money marketing the sweet spot of a paddle. It makes sense. If you read through the ads from different manufacturers, you'll see all sorts of terms around sweet spot. It's the biggest sweet spot we've ever had. It's the most powerful sweet spot you'll ever experience. It's the biggest, best, baddest sweet spot you could ever imagine. Uh, it, and it all feels a little bit confusing. Like how can you advertise every paddle as having the biggest sweet spot? It just doesn't make any sense. When we first began developing paddles five or six years ago, we started by researching the sweet spot itself and we were pretty surprised to find that there was really no good data on what a sweet spot was, how it was generated, uh, really no information on what factors controlled what a sweet spot was and how that translated into what we actually feel when we're playing. We were kind of stunned by this actually. It kind of seemed like as far as we could tell, a, a paddle had a big sweet spot because you said it did and you hoped that others would believe you. Well, that approach really isn't our style, so we knew right away that we were going to have to lead the way in researching exactly what the sweet spot was, what factors controlled it, how we could improve it, and ultimately how all of that could translate into improving your play out there on the court. We knew that the first thing we'd have to do was isolate some variables. I mean, think about it. You're swinging a paddle through space, so there's a speed, there's a direction, there's an angle. Uh, even the temperature outside can affect the materials within the paddle and then of course that's not even taking into consideration the ball so the ball is traveling at some speed it's got some spin to it balls are made from different materials different weights again temperature is a factor so as far as we could tell all of the research done on sweet spot was all done pretty subjectively where someone would bounce a ball on their paddle or they'd go out and hit a few and say like oh it has a pretty big sweet spot I can tell uh, and that's all great, that's totally worthwhile information, but we just felt that we wanted to eliminate as many variables as possible to really get down to the science of it to, to see if we could understand really what a sweet spot is. We designed a mechanical arm that would allow a paddle to swing through space at the exact same speed, angle, direction, time and time again. That was step one. Step two was to isolate the ball. And so what we've created is a way that we can place the ball at various locations along the paddle face and measure the ball speed after paddle impact at those points. By combining all of that data together, we're actually for the first time ever able to visualize what a paddle sweet spot looks like. And this is huge. So what you're seeing here is a time lapse of the actual data input that happens during our testing with our sweet spot tester. Uh, and we created this spreadsheet here that allows you to kind of real time see the uh, the sweet spot of the paddle come to life right before your eyes. It's it's a pretty fun process to see happen real time uh, and really fun to watch sped up like this. And so once you have this done, you can just do further testing to increase the resolution. And at that point, it's just a matter of rinse and repeat for additional paddles or further iterations of the same paddle. Continuing to iterate on the same paddle is where we learn the most. We were able to make small changes measuring between each change, and that really helped us develop our understanding of how the sweet spot could be manipulated within the structure of the paddle. Now we recognize this isn't a complete comprehensive analysis of what a paddle sweet spot is. By doing it the way we did, we could make a paddle, test it, make a tiny change to that paddle, test it again, and see how the sweet spot was altered by each small change. Uh, and again, this was a huge breakthrough, uh, as far as we can tell, for this entire industry. The first time ever we were using science to develop a paddle that could demonstrate to us and everyone else that it could outperform other paddles, not just because we said it could, but because it actually showed that it could.
All of the paddles that we make have been influenced by this research and it continues to guide us on a daily basis. On our website, you can see paddle sweet spots visualized, not just speculated about. That's a big deal. We're incredibly proud of the work we do on a daily basis just like this to develop paddles that are actually different from everything else out there. And because we sell directly to you on our website, we save you a bunch of money in the process. It just makes sense.